My name is Sam Vaknin and I'm a columnist in Brussels Morning. And today we are going to discuss the next looming financial crisis that is going to dwarf all the previous financial crises we have ever known. And yes, this includes the Great Depression, unless we do something about it. What on earth am I on? What am I talking about? I'm talking about private equity. What have we learned from the last banking and financial crisis a mere 15 years ago? Nothing, it would seem. Another meltdown is brewing in full sight and no one is batting an eyelid. Possibly because a lot of slush is greasing helpful political and regulatory wheels. Enough said. The culprit this time is known as private equity. It is managed in funds by financial advisory firms. The directors of these companies and the firms themselves invest about 1% of the capital of the funds and hurry to retrieve their so-called investment via an assortment of exorbitant fees, charges and commissions. Pension funds and other institutional investors are on the hook for the remaining 99% of the capital. The money is ploughed into operating businesses. But this is where the similarity to the much more sober index funds ends. While index funds buy incremental lots of stocks over many years or decades and diversify their portfolios, private equity funds take over entire target companies, lock, stock, and often sinking barrel. Worse still, private equity funds borrow huge dollops of money to complete these dubious transactions, known as LBOs or leverage buyouts. This is why most of these funds are also dubbed buyout funds. While index funds are heavily regulated, Shockingly, private equity funds are subject to no regulatory oversight, however cursory and minimal. Private equity advisors operate under toothless and nebulous laws, such as the Investment Advisors Act in the United States of America. Like venture capital, like hedge funds, private equity is a cornucopia, cornucopia of rapacious incentive fees usually a 2-3% management fee, regardless of how dismal the performance is, plus 20% of the profits, regardless of how fictitious these are. And such fees are illegal in all other parts of the money management and investment industry, but not with private equity funds. Moreover, index funds are obligated to provide daily liquidity by redeeming their shares. Private equity funds lock capital investments for many years with no clear or promulgated exit strategy, essentially a hostage-taking situation. Most such funds have a theoretical termination date, an obligation to liquidate in 7 to 12 years. But this too is a mirage. They simply roll over the invested capital to a newly formed private equity fund or to existing private equity fund. This is known as secondary buyout or continuation buyout. In other circles, this would fit the bill of a Ponzi scheme, of course. Even worse, the very word equity is misleading in the context of private equity. The funds seek to offload their purchases in order to realize a profit, and so they are never long-term truly committed investors. The median ownership time is six years. These funds actually resemble the pernicious flippers of Wall Street, albeit they flip their holdings more glacially, admittedly. The erstwhile exit strategies of an IPO, initial public offering, or through a sale to a public company. These are now very rare. In effect, 
position a cycle between private equity firms in a kind of an offshore shell game. To believe the self-serving propaganda of these secretive firms and funds, they provide a valuable service, strategic and operational advice, and an optimizing form of restructuring for a swath of suboptimal businesses. They also afford favorable, albeit somewhat incestuous, access to the financial sector, to banks, to hedge funds, to insurance companies and other lenders. But the truth is that most of these transactions are glorified forms of privileged insider trading. The new management is focused on enhancing the cash flow rather than on maximizing internal value, on relations with stakeholders, or on product or service quality. They invariably downsize brutally, ax capital investments, and cheapen product inputs. Typically, a single, a single advisory firm runs multiple private equity funds in various stages of the fund's life cycle. And the implicit leverage is stratospheric, and the funds cross amplify this leverage with their internal transactions. This is known ominously as a private equity complex. The United States is always a harbinger of bad tidings, such as asset bubbles. The private equity industry is no exception. About, 50, about 35% of corporate equity in the United States is now outside of public companies and therefore invisible and unregulated. Worse still, the cancer of private equity is now metastasizing in Europe and throughout Asia and eating into more traditional pecuniary sectors and activities such as broker dealerships, real estate financing, including mortgages and credit lending. In 2022, private equity funds in the United States alone raised one trillion United States dollars and managed a whopping 12 trillion USD in assets. This is equal to 20% of total corporate equity, or five times the ratio at the turn of the century, increasing by a compounded annual rate of 15%. The economy as a whole, by the way, just as a basis for comparison, grew it by a mere 3.6% annually compounded. So how come the discrepancy? Why did the industry grow by 15% while the economy grew by a mere 4? The discrepancy between these growth rates reflects, of course, leverage debt. 10% of GDP annually. The private equity industry is a nuclear time bomb primed to explode at any minute and take us all down with it. Such a conflagration will dwarf the disintegration of 2008 and 9. Yet not a single politician, not one analyst, is warning against these new excesses. And such deafening silence is enough to render me a conspiracy theorist. 